everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Four Chicks Chatting. So today we are talking about a topic that, and I'm laughing because usually, you know, we decide on a topic that we all have some input on, and then that's how we're going to teach our audience about the stuff that we've learned. And then this topic came up and I said, oh yeah, I want to do that because I need to learn more about it because I really don't know much about it. So today <laughs> I'm bringing us in to learn. It's all about what Krista needs to learn today. So everybody can learn right along with me because I stink at this topic. <laughs> you too. The topic today is lead magnets. What the heck are they? How can they help you? Are they going to help your business grow? You've heard them. You've heard that word. Do you know what it's about? And guess what? We have a resident expert on lead magnets. <laughs> It's <laughs> laughing and shaking her head. And she knows way more about it than anybody else on this podcast right now. <laughs> yep. So our uh, good old brave Sir Robin is going to is going to bring us in here and give us an overview and then <laughs> and for those that can't see and can only hear Kathy Marcino is doing some really fun tricks in her <laughs> corner of the view here. Um, so how about we just jump right in Robin what the heck is a lead magnet? What do we need to know? Well, to put it simple, if you think of the words lead magnet, you're bringing in leads into your business. So you're basically magnetizing people with information so that they want to give you your permission, their permission to then reach out to them on a further basis. So basically they're giving you their email address so that for example, I'm going to use my, a couple of my lead magnets that I have as examples. So I have, um, because I knew I was doing a webinar and I wanted to get more people on my email list. And this is just kind of a, a side note, but the number of people that you should have on your email list, your subscriber list to be effective and actually recruit clients in is 10,000 people. I, I think I may <laughs> have just had a stroke. Mm -hmm. I, I know, my right? My big old eyes just got right? 10 times bigger. Like I was a cartoon. thinking- yeah, I was thinking. But you were going to say a thousand. No, ten thousand. <laughs> I was thinking my twenty five hundred was just like rock star level. Not so much. I gotta go, guys. So, <laughs> I gotta go. I'm just going I gotta go to go down the, the grocery store, store and, and <laughs> ask people to sign up. <laughs> okay, if, yeah. if you have not just crashed so, your car while you're driving and listening to us, pull over yeah. and write this stuff down. So you think of that number, and it seems almost impossible, right? So if you, there are numerous things you can do with a lead magnet. So the first one I did was I was giving away 15 free stock photos with um, like content captions to go with them that people could use on social media. Well, that was great. I got some email addresses, but not to the level that I wanted. And it wasn't the same audience that I really knew I wanted to tap into from a branding perspective. Mm -hmm. So then I went to the next level. And because I'm a photographer and I do branding photography, I thought, you know what? There's so many people out there that cannot afford my services or cannot afford a professional photographer on a regular basis or at all because they're just starting out and they don't have a budget for it. So I created a lead magnet for smartphone for business photography. And that went crazy. People loved it because it gave them an opportunity to learn how to use light, how to use angles. It taught them, you know, how to set up things for composure purposes or composition purposes and things like that. So they could now create stock photos or even take a decent selfie or have someone else take a picture of them that was going to be eye pleasing and get noticed on social media the way it should be. Nowhere in that lead magnet did I say, don't ever hire a professional photographer. Mm -hmm. um, I said, you know, until you have the means to hire a professional photographer, because ultimately you want to represent yourself professionally and you want to have a professional photo, especially on your homepage or your website. So that was my, that was my second lead magnet and it generated a ton of emails. And then when I went to launch my first webinar, I had all of those emails addresses that I could market to. I could actually invite them in to listen to that webinar. And then the, the, everybody that listened to the webinar then was a potential to become a branding client for my branding program. So that was awesome. Now, you know, you, there are certain statistics and it's the number of responses you get for even a webinar. Like if you're going to go launch a webinar and say you have 500 people on your email address, mm -hmm. you may get 20 people to listen to your webinar and out of, or sign up for your webinar. And out of those 20, you may get one person that actually sits and listens to your webinar. 
So you, that's when like replays become very important. And you see people like Amy Porterfield and um, I'm trying to think, I think, I'm trying to think who else is a big, maybe Marie Forleo. I think they're, they're probably the two biggest ones that you see regularly from a female entrepreneur perspective that have Facebook ads and they're constantly putting um, webinars out into the world. Um, they're doing all those Facebook ads, which I did do Facebook ads to promo my lead magnets. Um, because, but the important thing about doing that to get the increased number of subscribers is to do the ads in a way that is targeting your ideal audience. And you can actually on, in Facebook, you can actually go in and I don't do any of this myself. I have someone that does this for me because this is all way over my head from a tech perspective, but you can actually go in and you can look at like Amy Porterfield. You can see like how many ads she's running, what um, her ideal audience is, what she's targeting and all of that. And then you can mirror, you can mirror mm -hmm. audiences. Wow, and that's, that's that is a, a great way to really define your ideal audience or help you target your ideal audience. Um, you can go down used to, and I think they've modified the, the ad algorithm, of course, because they're modifying algorithms every day, mm -hmm. but used to, you could do, you could see like if people purchased, you know, like a coach handbag, like you could get that specific, that's all changed now, but you can, you can get a general feel for, you know, who your ideal audience is and be able to find them. So let me so, back up for a second, if I can. Mm -hmm. So you created, uh, let's stick with the, um, the folks with the cell phone, with the taking a cell phone picture. Yeah. So what was that? It was like a, a PDF. So it was an ebook. Yeah, it was a PDF. And what I do is I create all of mine in Wistia, um, or not Wistia. Um, Wistia is the the video place. Visme, V I S M E, and it's it's very similar to Canva. You can do this in Canva or you can do it in Visme, and either platform is great. But I like Visme because I I don't know. I just found it easier for me to use. And it's quick now that I know the program, but I just design all the pages and I bring in, you know, you can bring in your pictures. They've got shapes. So you can create, um, like banners. You can, you can create, you know, different types, different levels of text. Um, there's graphics, you can create charts and, you know, bar graphs and pie charts and all of that in there. So it's really kind of cool. So I just, I created all the content in a Word document and then I copied and pasted it in, but I copied and pasted it into the formats that I created, like the text boxes or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then, so that's the download. Mm -hmm. And then that becomes the download and you can house that on, um, you can house that like on your website. I actually house my lead magnets on Amazon S3, which is a platform that you can house and then the downloads come through there. So you're not, you don't have the download on your website taking up space. And so does it link to that from mm -hmm. your website? Okay. Mm -hmm. So you put a, so now what? How do you link to that download from your website? Well, that would be a question for my VA. <laughs> <laughs> what's, the, what's the what's the bonus? What's the why? Is it take? Does it take too long on your website? Does right, it hold because up? it okay. Yeah, because the for search engine optimization, you want your website to be quick. So, like when you put pictures on your website or downloads on your website, all of those things increase the time for downloading for your website, and you don't want that because the longer it takes, the quicker people are going to just say, oh, forget it. This is taking too long and they'll go away. Okay. Yeah. So now you can also use platforms like ClickFunnels. Um, you can use Google Drive. So there's a lot of, or Google Docs, like Google Drive, I guess, but you can also use platforms like that as well. To house the thing. To house And the then thing. link to it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but what you want to do though, if you can, you want to make sure that you have, you can have your URL or your name somehow in the URL for the, for the lead magnet, if you can. Um, like I have mine, if you go on my website, there's, um, it's www.robingrahamphotography.com forward slash resources. And you can see on that page where I have the different lead magnets that you can download. So like okay. one is you can even put a pop-up on your website for your lead magnet. So if you have like, for example, because I'm a photographer, I have a lead magnet and I think we just switched this out actually, but for, I don't know, the past year I've had a lead magnet pop-up that was for how to prepare for a photo shoot or for a headshot session. So 
you know, I had that and the pop-up bar came up and then people could, if they wanted to get access to that, then they would put their email address and then I would give them that. Now the flip side of the email address thing is you wanna make sure like you, you get all these emails, but when you send out an email campaign, which in theory you should do once a week, every other week, you know, whatever, once a month mm -hmm. minimum, because you wanna keep your audience warm. And that's the idea. Like when people come in from, for a lead magnet, they may be a cold audience. So you wanna warm them up as fast as you can. So you wanna have emails that when they sign up, you're sending them an email saying, thank you for signing up. We're so glad you're here or whatever message you want to give them. And then that rolls them into your, your weekly subscription or your biweekly subscription. So, that so you can is that a program that you, that you, I guess what I'm, I guess my whole issue with all of this is like, how many steps does this take <laughs> <laughs> to get this, you know, to get these people in your flow, your funnel or mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it. And how many different programs do you have to use to do so that? for my lead magnets i use um well they all start i guess if you think about like the facebook ads and everything like all of that is done with click funnels and everything's kind of housed in this click funnel universe for a funnel and that's where the funnel steps are created that links to active campaign and you can use this program called zapier z-a-p-i-e-r and they, they're called zaps so click funnels will zap the person that signed up over to active campaign active campaign puts those people on my email address or ad email list and then those people are now on my email list and then all of my emails go out through active campaign because we can schedule them i'm exhausted now if you want to if you okay mary fran take I'm a exhausted. breath if you want to here's your oxygen tank okay? okay put your mask on i'm going to give okay. you some oxygen you can dip your toe in that mm -hmm. and if you already have constant contact or something through your WordPress site, you can, there's a, a few simple things built into there that you can start today that you don't have to have click funnels. But if you listen to all of like, like I was going to reference um, Madeline Sklar and, and her podcast partner, Cami on communities that convert, they talk about this a lot because you want to convert, you want that warm audience that Robin's talking about. You do need a more advanced system and there's people like jenna kutcher i mean hers she's got a whole thing for the year when you mm -hmm. sign on to her email list you get a email number one number two and then she catches you up to where she's at today so you can't that's when you really have all of these um different folks coming in and you've got webinars and you've got a book coming out and all that stuff but to just dip your toe in as a beginning spot you can do this i've done it with constant contact right now got much better at having little landing pages and stuff like that mm -hmm. um that is right within there within constant mm -hmm. contact yeah mm -hmm. okay yeah okay. mailchimp is another one convert i do i do use mailchimp but i and again. it's free mailchimp is free so if you have your email list there you can always but the thing is you have to have a place to house that lead magnet like you know you've got to have a method to distribute it so your email list is easy done through mailchimp convert right. kit constant contact is right Kristen constant mm -hmm. contact or yeah. you know active campaign any of those but for a lead magnet you've got to have a distribution mechanism and that's where you have to have it housed somewhere somewhere okay I mean you I've, could put it as a page on your website mm -hmm. and you could have the PDF on your website and then they could go to that and print it off I guess from your website I don't know exactly how that works because I've only done mine through active campaign so how about if we also continue Mary Fran breathing and not holding her breath that she looks like she's doing? <laughs> I, I've heard I've blue. Got a couple of things that I could, I think I can, I can take Mary Fran back to breathing again. Please do. Oh, good. Okay. Go for it. What was the word? Revive. I think I can revive, revive you. Resuscitator. Okay. That's it. Um, remember, you have to ask first, do you need help? You can't <laughs> just start doing that. I learned that in my CPR class. Anyway. <laughs> So the whole idea, no we, we talked about what, what a lead magnet is, is utilized for, but we didn't talk that much about what a lead, ma the actual lead magnet per se, that deliverable that you are going to receive as a customer is. And so I think a lot of people freak out saying, oh my God, I have to go and recreate or no, create a lead magnet. You don't necessarily have to do that. A lead magnet can be a blog that you wrote. Mm -hmm. or a video that you took. Very good. Um, 
there's a, a program out there that I have used. It's called Designer. Mayor Fran, I think I shared this yes, with you. Yes, you did. But um, for the listeners at home, it's Designer. It's the word design with two R's after it. Okay. And it, it will allow you, and it's free. I mean, the, the, depending on the level of, of sophistication, you can go up to their paid service. But this particular one is free. And what you can do is upload a blog or two and turn it into an ebook or turn a word document into, I took a, a blog on her, um, communication styles and I turned it into a guide and that was a lead magnet. So here's a guide to communicate more effectively with your colleagues. And I took it from a blog and it made it really fancy and put it out there. And, and that went really, really well too. Hmm. So I, I, don't, I don't want people to think, oh my gosh, I have to create a lead magnet now. You probably no. have that mm -hmm. somewhere on your computer. Yeah. You repurpose content. One hundred percent. Like my, I had taught a cell phone for, for photography class, so I had all that information in a PowerPoint presentation. So I just converted the the format. So in terms of the word lead magnet and and the concept of it, it's really to get people to sign onto your email list, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So you have to add value. You can't just put out anything there and hope for the best that they're going to say, "Oh my God, I can't. Where do I sign?" Yeah. So it has to be something that you know, if, if you know who your audience is and you know what their business challenges are, then chances are you might have a tip or a trick or a tool that could help them answer those business questions. So that's what you want to do. You want to make sure that you're answering a question and adding value. And that's why they're going to sign up. Yeah. And then you want to keep them by giving them more value. And, you know, we thought we've talked about this before, you know, you want to inform, educate and entertain. And that's what then your email distribution is going to be. Like when you send those weekly emails or bi-weekly, whatever time frame you do, that's, you want to keep them coming back. You want to keep them reading those. You want to warm them up so that then even if they're not going to hire you, they become a referral source for you mm -hmm. because they trust you. They've gotten to know you, they like you, and they trust you now. Okay. I'm also looking at, um, different types of things that it's that are, are being recommended as possible lead magnets which would be like a cheat sheet one of them is saying or a mm -hmm. template for something or um, a checklist mm -hmm. so I guess there's really you know there's a ton of stuff that you could put out there depending on your area of expertise like top five tips to do xyz or mm -hmm. to be a blah 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 or you know like you said Robin uh, you know maybe top five tips for for selfies or, or something to that effect so I guess when it comes down to it that like the whole idea of having to create that is the thing that, that sort of throws you especially people who aren't good at creating stuff but maybe what you have to do is just look at your expertise and see what kind of package you could put some tips or some guidelines or something like mm -hmm. that not that you're giving away the store but you're showing yourself to be that expert again mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like a little teaser you know yeah mm -hmm. that makes sense so, and it's like our, we say at the end of our, um, our podcast, if you, do you want to start your own chick chat? And we have that, mm -hmm. that piece of content that people can go get on how to start a little mastermind, right? So that mm -hmm. would be technically you, we could use that as a lead magnet. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. If we were building um, an email list. Okay. Yes. And so it doesn't have to be like long and lengthy. Mm -hmm. Like my, my yeah. lookbook is like 40 some pages. I mean, it's huge or maybe it may even be more than that. It's huge, but that's, that's taking someone from now I have a business and I need branded photography. How do I hire a photographer? What do I, you know, what do I need to look for? How do I, what shots do I need to have? What wardrobe options do I need to have? What props, right. you know, and then it's a whole lookbook. That's totally different. Cause like even a checklist, like I could do, well, even like the one I have for how to prepare for a photo shoot, it's like maybe 10 steps, you know, mm -hmm. here's just boom, boom, boom. So the checklists are a great way to do it. I've downloaded those. Yes. I yeah, I, I have I too. I love that. Yeah. And I think people want something quick mm -hmm. and they want, like you said, Kath, that you're going to solve a problem. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here's, and, and then that has to be in the title of the lead magnet too, right? Like it has to have something that right away people see, this is what I'm going to get out of this. I need this. Yeah. So it has okay. to be specific enough. You know, it can't be like, I, you know, one of my problems as a writer is that I like words and I like 
you know, cutesy words and fun words and words that, you know, have a punch, but they're not always necessarily the ones that are going to get the message across about what's in the package. You have to be direct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So now I know what they are and how to create them and the different systems that we can use them in. What about some real, this, and this is a little on the spot, um, places that you use them. Uh, Robin already said Facebook ads is where she spends a her time with the getting lead magnets out there I, and I'm, I'm bringing this up because it's the only thing I can contribute <laughs> <laughs> I heard on that podcast today that I was talking about with communities that convert Tyler J McCall was on and he advertises them or gets people um, to his lead magnet on how about this on Instagram stories the poll mm -hmm. thing feature and he was saying that you know if you want to have my checklist for whatever Instagram stories. I don't know what his, his example was. Just um, leave your email in this or hit whatever on the poll thing. Yes, yes or no. Hit yes and I'll email it to you. Yeah. I do that too. And LinkedIn is another great resource for that. Mm -hmm. I put my lead magnets on. I post them on LinkedIn as well. So Instagram, I, I haven't really ever done Twitter because that's I put out mine of my on Twitter. That's out of my wheelhouse, but I know you, you and Kath, you and Kristen both know Twitter so much better than I do, but um, LinkedIn and then um, Instagram is huge because with Instagram, you know, now everything's with the stories. So you mm -hmm. can do either, you can do a live, you could do an Instagram. I've done Instagram TV and then put mm -hmm. it in my feed. I've done Instagram mm -hmm. TV and I put it in my stories. And then I have that link to my resource page in my bio so that people can, I can just say the links in my bio and people can go get it. Or to drive more DMs, I do the question sticker in my stories. And then I get their email address and I send it. And that way I have their email. I can add it directly to my, to my yeah. list too, even if they don't go sign up for it. Yeah, because he was saying that people want to do, it's, it's just amazing to me, but it's true. People want to do the least amount of work to go get what they want. So they don't want to have to type in their email. That's why he said, I use the poll. Yes. And then mm -hmm. I send it to them. Mm -hmm. And then same thing. Then you have their email address and you do it on the back end. Mm -hmm. but more people click that way. Now, how do you do it in LinkedIn? It just as a post? I do it as a post. Yeah. Okay. And then just direct them via the link as to where it's mm -hmm. housed. Exactly. And then I'll do that. And they have specific links, so I can just use that link. And then I'll also, whenever I do um, a blog post or which I always convert my blog post over to LinkedIn, LinkedIn long post, like a full article, then I'll put the links in those full articles as well. I just did that today for the first time. I did a blog and I, I copied the whole thing and stuck it in as a LinkedIn article, the exact same thing. So this is, that's what I do exactly, except I usually wait like a week. And that's something Jen Gardella taught me like mm -hmm. eons ago. She said, recycle that content, but for search engine optimization, Google wants you to space those out. I don't know if that's still true or not. This was a couple years ago she told me that, but I always space them out by a week. I just don't have, I didn't link my website, the blog to the LinkedIn article. It's just standing there by itself. I was actually, cause I was curious which one goes further with the different things that I do with my blog and with LinkedIn. I want to see which one goes further, but it's an, it, the only thing is it's a topic that is, it's, it's already taking off on LinkedIn because it's a hiring topic. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, it's about the hiring process of blind people. So I think it's going to just by nature organically do a lot better on LinkedIn than as my blog, because my blog goes, you know, Twitter, Facebook, my people that read my blog on social media aren't necessarily in the hiring frame of mind. So it might've been a little biased, but I was just interested to see which, where each one of them goes. Yeah. Just make sure you put a call to action in those um, articles on LinkedIn so that they, you know, drive them back to another article on your website so yeah. that you can drive traffic to your website. Well, I was actually looking to create more content and, and honestly, out of curiosity for myself and my boys, my call to action was simply, I want to hear from the people that read it that have had experiences like I was talking about because I want to use that to create content and solve our problem at the same time here in my house. Um, but yeah, I do have to think of better of a call to action at the every one of my link. And, and you don't even have to have the link in the, as a call to action. You can say, you can read more about this here and then link mm -hmm. it back to your, cause then oh, Okay. Cause back. I did that with the book. I said, Kirk, who I mm -hmm. featured is in my book. And if you want to read more of his story and other people like him, go get thriving blind. And there's the Amazon link. Yeah. There you go. Yep. Okay. See, you know more than you thought you did. 
it's so funny because I was simply just this this topic that's irritating the crap out of me with the with Mitchell not getting hired um, and Kirk had some very interesting insight and it's a big debate in the blind community so anyway um, look at that and then I linked to my book but I really need to sell books that's why I was just like hey by the way he's in it <laughs> go buy the book go buy the book <laughs> Well, that was, this was very helpful. I mean, I, know, I, I great. think you tend to, you hear these words that become part of the, the vocabulary and they can be very intimidating when you have no idea what the heck they're about. But you're basically talking about creating a download, housing it somewhere, leading people to it, which you can do on your social media outlets that you already have established. Mm -hmm. And then you just need a place to put these email addresses like Constant Contact or, or MailChimp or whatever you decide to use and then keep in touch with them through that. Mm -hmm. Look at you summing it all up. Yay! <laughs> I got something. I'm smarter than I was when we started. Gold you stars for Mary Fran. You are smarter than the average bear, Mary Fran. Don't <laughs> let anybody a, tell you anything she, different. She, she took a quick trip to Oz this afternoon and came home <laughs> with a brain. I wow. got my ruby slippers, baby. <laughs> all right, well, with that, we I am going more, to. Um, the brilliance, I think she just kind of summed up all the brilliance bombs, I think. Yeah. I don't oh yeah, think we need to add anything. Well, plus we just did an episode on boundaries, and I'm going to honor the boundary that we set for ourselves, and we got to wrap this sucker up. So, thank you everybody for tuning in, and I am really curious. I hope the folks that are listening will reach out on that social thing um, and let us know what you're doing for lead magnets. Put links to them so that we can see them yeah, and, and we'll let share us them. share them and yeah. let's um, let's chat about what's working, what's not working. And maybe we can do a follow-up in a few months and take some questions about, hey, oh, wait, this did idea. work. This did work. Like so, uh, and Mary Fran, we're especially going to look for all of your lead I magnets. Can't wait. I actually <laughs> have <laughs> one. Robin knows I've been working <laughs> on one. one. I have right, good. one. I Let us know when one. it comes out and then we can all link to it. So thank we'll you everybody for uh, tuning in. Yes, all of our listeners watch for Mary Fran's link, lead <laughs> magnet there. We're going to get her a t-shirt, hashtag lead magnet. I made a lead magnet. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, connect with us on that social thing. And uh, thanks so much for listening. Leave us your rating and review on the different platforms you listen to us. That's how we keep the message going. So for all the chicks, thanks so much for tuning in. Thanks. See ya. Bye. Bye, Bye everybody.